Hi and welcome to not just any visit for you in the movie dome. This is the 100th episode and it's going multi caps. So for your 100th visit, you're going to be seeing quite a few different categories having segments made for them. The first of which will be a review. And that's coming up right now. Okay, now the film I'm going to review here for this episode is the 1970 Disney live action animation musical Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Now, it actually tells the story of Angela Lansbury, who takes in three orphan children during the Second World War, and they end up going on a magical adventure. That's right. Now, of course, I expect most of you to have seen this film. It's a classic. But for those of you who haven't, and whose parents still have to introduce you to it, I'm sorry. Um, I should have called a spoiler warning. My bad. Sorry. But I haven't actually given you the full plot of the story. Now, Angela Lansbury's character in this is called Miss Price. And she's learning to be a witch. So, naturally, David Tomlinson comes in as Professor Emilius Brown, who turns out to be a common. Yeah. Now, interesting side fact here. For those of you who don't remember, I'm pretty sure a lot of you will, but David Tomlinson also appeared in Mary Poppins six years before as George Banks. Now, there are some good musical numbers in the film. And uh, what do I think of the film itself? Well, as if you couldn't have guessed, It's toe-tapping fun, uh, being a musical and all, and so my, uh, my true, honest to God, rating for the film would have to be, okay, I'm going to give it, yep, yeah, a 10 out of 10. don't think I've made sense there if I haven't made if I haven't made sense um, I apologize anyway that's it for the review segment the next segment of this episode will be a first impression stay tuned for that welcome back guys now to continue the 100th episode celebration it's time for the as promised, first impression segment. So we're going to jump down here and find out what it chooses for us. Come on, Mr. Randomizer. What have you got? And we've got... Furies. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing for this episode. In celebration of 100. So the actual first impression will come after we've watched the film. Well that's it guys. That's the Furies. Oh, whoa. Another entertaining movie at best. There's nothing to say about it at worst. It depends what your tastes are at the end of the day. But mine and my brother's is also my assistant here. We like the film.
And wow, okay. <laughs> I guess it for this one hundredth episode, that's it for this segment. Join me in the next segment, which will be a top ten. Until then, peace out. Welcome back, guys. Now, that was the first impression on the film The Furies you've just seen. <coughs> Bless me. So now we move on to the next segment, which would be a top ten list. And I've decided that it's going to be... A top 10 films I've seen so far this year. Why not? So then I can give you the rundown of 10 of the best films I've seen this year. So far. So let's get on with the list shall we? Coming in at number 10 we have Little Monsters. A very funny take on a zombie survival drama. That was a Hulu exclusive, by the way. At number nine, Velvet Buzzsaw, a, Net a Netflix original movie. Now, all of these would have been first impressions episodes. Most of them would. Okay. At number eight, Sadako versus Kayako. A very honest to God, entertaining attempt at a crossover from the Japanese with their two most popular horror characters, Sadako from Ringu and Kayako from Juon. <laughs> and number seven, The Furies. Now, I only saw this last night, and it was last night's, uh, it was the first impression segment in this episode. And, yeah. It falls under a good category because, again, very entertaining. Okay, at number six, we have... Toy Story 4. This falls just below average because when I first saw it, I'd actually... Let another friend's bad judgment cloud my better judgment on the film. I'm not going to name that friend. <sighs> Best not to. Okay, into the average category. We have at number five... Ma, another one of the recent first impressions, supposedly based on a true story, but well, the elements of the true story are there, but it's mainly all fictionalised. What can you do? Number four. Dun 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 We have Pet Cemetery, the new one from this year. Yeah. 
nearing the top of the list. <laughs> yeah. What can you what what can I say? Okay. Quite spooky in some places. Okay, sharing number three spot, we have The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2. I'm going to have to put them both at number three because it wouldn't be fair to put one in one spot and the other in the other. Two of the scariest films I've seen this year. Uh, number two, we have... The Curse of La Llorona. Another film from the Conjuring universe. And the first film probably will be the only film based on this Mexican urban legend I ever will see. Well, James Wan, you outdo yourself, don't you, my friend? <laughs> um, okay. Now, this was before the first impression segments ever came about now before I give you my number one pick I'm gonna give you some honorable mentions okay and those will go to I know what you're probably going to think of me for this, because uh, at least one of these is going to be a film for the very young. Thomas and Friends Big World Big Adventures. I promise I'll do a top 10 Thomas movies episode at some point. Um, then we also have the live action version of Aladdin as an honourable mention. The Nun, definitely the scariest film in the Conjuring universe. I know. So much I love the Conjuring films for you guys. Because at, um, at my number one spot, which I'm about to give you now, we have Annabelle Comes Home. Definitely the best film in the Annabelle trilogy. No surprise there. I'm sure for a lot of you. So that's my top 10 best films I've seen this year list. And that's only so far. We're not done watching films for this year yet. So that now leads me in to tell you the next segment will be chronologies. You have to wait till the next segment to find out which films I'm going to be doing the chronology of. Until then, peace out. Hey, welcome back, guys. It's now time for another chronology segment, as announced at the end of the last segment. And I thought I'd try and tackle the chronologies of the Back to the Future trilogy. Yeah, it's going to be a mad one, this. Mainly because of the time travel the films feature. So, uh, first of all, 
The release of the films was very straightforward. As I'm sure you're aware, Back to the Future was released in 1985. Back to the Future Part 2 was released in 1989. And Back to the Future Part 3 was released in 1990. But the chronology of the films in the timeline they're set on does get a bit higgledy-piggledy. Starting in the year of release, 1985, um, we follow the adventures of Doc Brown, Martin McFly, and um, Doc Einstein, and his girlfriend, Jennifer. Yeah, um, well, this is where it's going to get confusing. Um, because Marty in the first film time travels to 1955 where he meets his parents and prevents them from falling in love and has to make sure he makes them fall in love otherwise he'll never exist so yes the bulk of the film, due to the time travel, takes place in 1955, with opening and closing segments in 1985. Back to the Future Part 2 opens and once again closes in 1985, but it time travels into the year 2015 which was the future from when the film came out. And this is where Marty has to prevent his son from going down the nick for robbing a bank. Yeah. And he buys a sports almanac, which old Biff then gets his hands on and creates... The alternate 1985 they end up travelling back to. Where things have gone to hell. So yeah, 1955. 1985. 1985A. The 1955 of that reality. To get the almanac back. They have to go back there. Confused, I don't blame you. Because then they go back to the real 1985 after that. Told you it'd get confusing, didn't I? <laughs> then Back to the Future Part 3 comes along. And it starts in 1955 after Marty gets stranded there. So yeah, they don't go back to 1985 actually. So it's not an exact bookender. I forgot about that. But, this film sends Marty back to 1885 during the Old West to try and convince Doc Brown to come home. Wow, we're getting some pretty deep territories here. Because here we meet Clara Clayton who becomes Doc Brown's love interest and later his wife after he rescues her from falling into a ravine that's supposed to be named after her due to the accident that kills her. Well, in the end, they do all go back to 1985, or Marty does, where he's ordered to destroy the time machine due to all the damage it's caused. Only for then, Doc, Clara, and their boys, Jules and Vern, to come back to the future in a new time machine conveniently built out of a steam locomotive. <laughs> oh dear. So destroy one time machine and build another. Chronologically making the steam locomotive the first time machine Dot Brown ever built. 
Try and wrap your head around that one. <laughs> so, the chronology. Ready for this? The chronology of the films. We go back first to the main setting of Back to the Future Part 3, 1885. Then we jump ahead to the main setting of Part 1, 1955. Then we jump into the opening segments, which 1955 is also the closing segment of the second film and opening segment of the third. Then we jump ahead to the opening and closing segments of well the opening segments of part one and two and the closing segment of part one, 1985. Then we go and we jump ahead after that to uh, 1955 of the alternate reality. I should have said that before. And then the alternate reality, 1985. I did tell you it would get confusing. Even more so confusing than a certain other films, chronologies I could have covered here, but chose not to. Anyway, that will be it for this segment. Well, actually, I think this episode would have gone on long enough, so that's it for this 100th episode celebration, guys. I was going to do a segment, uh, a, a scene for every segment, but I think this has gone on long enough. I hope you enjoy it. I intend for you to enjoy it. So next episode, guys, how about I give you a ranking for the next episode? And you have to find out which films I'm going to be ranking in that episode when it comes. Until then, thanks for watching the past 100 episodes. And have... Fun or try to have fun watching movies. <laughs>